So we're building on the Battletech narrative here, looking at the different great houses, asking ourselves if we were going to build a mech force tabletop in the game to represent this. And certainly there are many angles and many different ways to approach. What would the most common or what would be the focus in terms of, of battle mechs for each of the houses? And we looked at Steiner, Davian, Karita. Let's explore House Marik and... I feel like in the Battletech narrative, this house kind of gets the least amount of attention because it was one of the first after the fall of the Star League to pull together. And it operates more under martial law, kind of a, a general stewardship leading, as opposed to the other houses like Davian and Steiner, which are ruled through the force of an elite ruling family. So because that structure is a little bit different and in the narrative itself, its location, a lot of the planets are lacking heavy industry. And again, it's not to say that there isn't a planet dedicated to heavy industry, but looking at the narrative overall. So if I was approaching this and I wanted to build a lore specific army, what this means in the narrative is that uh, there's almost two tiers of military in House Marik. The first is, of course, the mechs, the mech warriors, literally the knights, these very, very elite units that exist and could be considered independent of the various planets that make up the Federation. Second to that, um, there's an important point put on each planet itself raising a military force. And, and this is not so much a militia. Certainly all the planets are going to have access to a militia. It, it just makes sense to have those resources on hand, even given, well, given the limitations of space travel, although space travel does exist in, in Battletech, and it is fairly reliable during this time period, but it's in the best interest of every planet to have a militia. We're talking about an actual military fighting force professional. And these, this second tier fighting force is mainly conventional weapons, massive amounts of infantry, massive amounts of tanks, air support, and navies. House Marique is known for its combined arms. So even if one was doing a pure Battletech Lance, a pure Battletech Lance, I think you would be pulling in, meaning just mechs, I think I don't know if you can necessarily run it pure. I think you would want to include vehicles and infantry. If I was designing a lance, I would probably, I won't say half of the battle value, but a, a, a third or a quarter of the battle value, I would dedicate two vehicles. I would dedicate two infantry. Now, in terms of selecting the mechs and the vehicles, this is where things get um, a little bit interesting. Technology is important in House Marique. Um, it talks about in the narrative how lacking a lot of dedicated heavy industry and, and having a smaller footprint and dealing with the other houses, which are much larger and have a greater establishment, you basically have two options. The first is to go all in on mercenaries, but they're unreliable and they can be expensive. Or you look for a technological Advantage And House Marique, through what it can manufacture and through negotiation and through trade, that seems to be the focus. So if I was designing a lance, I would look to pick mechs that have a higher tech base. They might be rare. They might not be as rare. I think it would be more common to find a Cyclops if I was building a command lance. Um, now, tactically, of course, we could say, OK, the Cyclops might not be the most efficient tabletop mech compared to, say, an Atlas or an Awesome. But in that narrative, the, the command computer of the Cyclops would be very, very important. I think if I was taking vehicles and playing with some of the design quirks and secondary options, I would take a Mobile HQ. Mobile HQ, massively high-tech. It's, it's going to help you with the initiative and other aspects of the mission. I would look to incorporate them. Uh, if I was pulling in vehicles... Now, I love the Patton. I love the Rommel. These are, these are heavy tanks. I love the Von Luckner. But the technology base for them is, is pretty standard. Pretty standard. Not that much different than today, just in different scope and size. I would look to take, um, say, Shreks and other PPC carriers that utilize energy-based weapons, PPCs, and have fusion engines. 
there's a number of vehicles that in the succession era, the succession wars, fusion engines are rare. And through the magic of uh, the techs, I would probably want to pull those fusion engines out and somehow put them in a battle mech to keep the battle mechs going. House Marique has both. So I think we would see a, um, a lot more rare or high-tech vehicles in their forces. And I think if I was picking mechs, I would pick a little bit more on the high-tech end, um, even if it didn't have practical in-game effects, but, but just to represent this edge. My mech force would be a little smaller. My conventional arms would be much, much bigger. And I would have massive, massive amounts of infantry and ways to deliver that infantry. And on a side note, uh, just tactical wise posting up to my Battletech channel here, check out Infantry Tactics, check out Karnov Tactics. Uh, that's, that's got House Marik all over it. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys in the comments. And again, we're looking at the narrative. What would be a standard force? Um, if you were going in as a mercenary company, what do you think you would encounter? That's not to say they don't have battle masters, that they don't have crusaders, that they don't have any of the stuff that you want to play, you want to build. Battletech is a big, big place to play in, to game in, to narrative in. But there are some nuances, nuances if we're looking at that narrative. 